In writing a 365-page book targeting the Church of Scientology, Lawrence Wright sought out a tiny group of disgruntled ex-members led by this man, expelled from the church for financial misconduct, deception, ineptitude, and violence. Nearly all of Wright's sources were dismissed from the church for similar offenses, including embezzlement, financial wrongdoing, sexual misconduct, physical abuse, and severe violations of church doctrine. Yet these are the individuals Lawrence Wright uses to impugn the character of the church and its leader, a man responsible for a worldwide religion and its unprecedented expansion, and under whose stewardship the church's social betterment programs have become the largest non-governmental anti-drug and human rights campaigns on earth. But in writing his so-called expose on Scientology, Lawrence Wright's sources were far from credible, and Wright knew it. Their allegations so far-fetched that a federal judge and an appeals court dismissed them as baseless. Lawrence Wright ignored that. And when the church provided thousands of pages of evidence documenting the falsehood of those claims, Lawrence Wright continued to present the allegations as fact. When asked in a journalist forum, do you believe that journalism can lead to truth? Wright had this to say. Truth is one of those subjective terms that are pointless to get too tied up about. Wright's book was released in January 2013, but failed to generate reader interest. Still, it found itself immediately steeped in controversy about the veracity of its claims, so much so that the book's publisher would not release it in Britain, Ireland, Canada, or Australia because of their libel laws. The chances of losing a lawsuit were simply too great. Now, documentary filmmaker Alex Gibney has taken Lawrence Wright's book at its word without question or examination. I, I, I utterly trusted Larry. I wasn't looking for, you know, holes in his story. Over the two years Gibney quietly worked on his documentary, he never once contacted the church, visited a church, or spoke to any of its members. His documentary was in the can before he even mentioned it to them. And to this day, Gibney refuses to reveal his allegations to the church. Let's take a closer look at Wright and Gibney's sources. Meet Mark and Claire Headley, disgruntled ex-church members expelled a decade ago. Broke, bitter, and out for revenge, Mark and Claire Headley devised a plan to hit the jackpot, bringing his and her lawsuits against the Church of Scientology, claiming that their religious work amounted to human trafficking. A charge the Headleys devised as a test case in an elaborate fantasy to bring down the church. To bolster their claims, Mark and Claire Headley conspired with this man, Marty Rathbun, and his cronies from that small group of rabid anti-Scientologists bent on destroying the church, there to spin whatever tale the Headleys wanted them to. Lawrence Wright embraced their claims wholeheartedly, the storyline of human rights abuses apparently too enticing to resist. And so Wright made the Headley lawsuit the centerpiece of his book, and the crux of his entire critique of Scientology. But the Headley's bogus claims were laughed out of court, thoroughly discredited at every turn. Mark and Claire Headley alleged that they were being held against their will at the church facility, while their own photographs taken during that time show them on vacations across the country. The Headleys also insisted they were the victims of forced labor. But by their own admission, what they did was not only voluntary, they actually had fun doing it. With all the evidence in hand, the judge ruled that the Headleys repeatedly showed by word and deed that they enjoyed their work, performed it willingly, and were free to leave at any time. Ultimately, their claims were thrown out of court for good. And as a result of their bad faith, the court ordered Mark and Claire Headley to reimburse the church a total of $40,000 for its legal costs. In other words, the court told the Headleys they lost and to take their case, go away, and never come back. But the Headleys refused to accept the court's ruling appealed the judgment, and again were unanimously overruled. 
Lawrence Wright knew all about this decision, yet eight months later, he published the Headley's allegations anyway, while failing to mention that they were proven entirely false in a crushing court defeat. And if Lawrence Wright couldn't be bothered to read a court decision, he could have asked Claire's mom and dad if he wanted the truth. There were quite a few Christmases when they would come to us for Christmas. They would drive themselves. They always had a vehicle. They could come and go as they pleased. Claire always seemed really happy. And she was telling me what a great experience this was and how much she had learned and grown. And by her own statements to me, she loved what she was doing. But Lawrence Wright refused to mention this or anything else revealed in these court proceedings that discredit the Headleys as his sources, such as the facts that Mark Headley had been working the tabloid press, admitting under oath he was selling tales about the church and its members as a paid source, by last count, raking in an estimated $35,000. Among his clients, Life and Style and the now defunct News of the World. He has also been quoted in Inside Edition and in Touch, while Claire Headley told her story to the National Enquirer. But what the Headleys didn't reveal to the tabloids is why they abandoned Scientology and their family in the first place. As a low-level staff technician, Mark Headley secretly sold church-owned electronic equipment on eBay and pocketed the money. Court documents show that over $15,000 went into his personal PayPal account. But in his book, Lawrence Wright ignores the fact that Headley was ripping off the church and spins the tale of an exploited worker who makes a daring escape. It's a sensational storyline that sells books and gets ratings, but is pure fiction. Because the day before Mark Headley was to face questioning regarding his involvement in the theft of church property, Headley simply got on his motorcycle and rode out the gate. Today, Mark and Claire Headley continue to cling desperately to their self-assigned roles as church attackers. Here's Mark Headley in Germany at an anti-Scientology press conference, associating with the notorious cyber terrorist group Anonymous. Headley has also spewed his vitriol in over 500 posts on this hate blog, many of them detailing lurid sexual insults against the church, its members, and its leader, including a violent, unrepeatable taunt directed at a church lawyer whose daughter was killed in a tragic accident. Mark Headley's vicious writings have even incited a murder threat against the church and its leader. Headley has committed numerous violent assaults against women as well, intimidating young female co-workers he knew couldn't fight back. So here's what we have. Two paid attackers of their former religion, mean-spirited individuals who haven't set foot in a church of Scientology in over 10 years, quoted by Lawrence Wright over 77 times in his diatribe against Scientology used extensively by Alex Gibney in the making of his cable documentary and all of it greenlit by executive producer Sheila Nevins on behalf of HBO. They know full well that the foundation of Wright's book has been completely rejected by the courts. Premised on an utter falsehood, their reporting crumbles like a house of cards. Yet these propagandists are still trying to fool viewers with lies and sensationalism all of them selling out for the almighty dollar. All of them banking on the word of a discredited and spiteful couple looking for a payday. A couple who lost. In future segments, we're going to show you more of Lawrence Wright's sources. Remember Marty Rathbun, the ringleader of that tiny group Lawrence Wright befriended and used to tell false stories about their former religion? That small collection of disgruntled anti-Scientologists the Headleys belong to? Shut the fuck up. I'm he was dismissed right and expelled from the church for criminal activities. That's criminal, as in felony. His resume also includes episodes of shoving, kicking, punching, and extreme violence, and a honeymoon night spent in jail. But Lawrence Wright doesn't reveal any of that or any other sort of detail about this man. You'll also meet those this man calls his posse. 
such as the guy he nearly killed, who he now calls his best good buddy. This guy deserted his children and ruthlessly attacked his estranged wife. The thief who used to ride shotgun with the ringleader on his punching sprees. Admitted accomplices in a scheme to suborn perjury, getting others to lie under oath. And another Lawrence Wright source, the lady expelled from the church for having sexual relations with someone she was ministering to, a violation of professional conduct in any church. You'll meet her too. And the writer who took advantage of his Scientology connections to take $5 million for writing scripts he never completed. Lawrence Wright and Alex Gibney could have shown you the truth about Scientology. For this is Scientology Today. A rapidly expanding religion with new churches opening by the month throughout the world. But instead of showing you this, Wright and Gibney have chosen to give you this man. Shut the fuck up! And his tiny group of followers. That's right, this guy the is the up. leader of all Lawrence Wright's sources. Shut the they fuck are interconnected, up. each of them corroborating the other's false stories and lies. Some for big bucks. All of them handpicked the to populate up. the story Lawrence Wright and Alex Gibney want to sell. Lawrence Wright, Alex Gibney, and executive producer up. Sheila Nevins know full well who these people really are. But you won't Shut see that up. on HBO. Shut the fuck up!